Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com and today I'm gonna dive into the Waves Sheps Omni channel. Now, Andrew Sheps is one of the best mixing engineers in the world, one of my mixing heroes, primarily because I love all the music he mixes and he's like a crazy smart professor of audio, like a mad scientist of music. He's got sweet hair and a sweet beard, which is pretty much all I'm saying. Which is why if you look at the Waves Omni channel, his face is right on that plugin. As it should be. Well, here's the deal. The Omni channel is a really powerful channel strip. I'm a huge fan of channel strips. Just look through any of my content. I use channel strips all the time. I love the concept of a channel strip because it simplifies my life. It simplifies your life. You get to take the two most powerful tools you have at your disposal, EQ and compression, combine them into one, add some filtering, maybe add a de-esser, maybe add a gate. These are things that are nice to have as well. But what the Shep's Omni Channel does is give you all those tools. You can interchange the plugins by dragging and dropping. You can use them in mid-side mode or in duo mode so that it's or multi-mono depending on how you view it so that the sides aren't working together so that it'll interact with the left differently than the right or traditional stereo mode. However you want, there is a ton of flexibility baked into the plugin. The idea is that it's supposed to be a Swiss army knife. So something I thought would be fun to do is talking with the guys at Waves because I love both Andrew and the channel strip concept. And I use a lot of the Waves plugins, specifically the Waves SSL channel strip is usually my go-to. And so I decided, what if I could do a mix with 90% the Omni channel, except for a few delays and reverbs and a couple other specific application plugins. I'm doing this entire mix with just the Sheps Omni channel because it shows that you can use the EQ and compression and all the other goodies built in, including the saturation, which we'll talk about a little bit. And I did an entire mix through this plugin. So let's dive into Pro Tools. I'll show you what I'm using the plugin for, how I'm using it, and sort of give you a feel of how much this plugin can add to your mix. So here we are in my session. The song I'm working on is a collaboration that I did with Grammy nominated producer, Ill Factor, super talented guy. So a lot of his production, and then I sang and played guitar, and then here's the mix. So what I wanna do is play you a snippet of the song, all mixed, and then I'm gonna take away the plugins and you'll hear it raw, and then I'm gonna show you kind of some of the things I'm doing with the Omni channel. All right, so there you go. You get a feel for the song. Let's um, start there in, uh, we'll start in the hook and we'll take away all the plugins and you can kind of hear what's going on. All right, so there we have it raw, right? Um, loses a lot of energy and excitement and sizzle, um, but the tracks were really cool. I mean, what we started with are really, really fun. So let's break down what's going on here. Let's um, let's get in the hook here, and I'm gonna show you how a lot of this is just simple EQ compression and saturation from the Omni channel. So I've got a few things on the mix bus. I'm gonna turn those on. Um, including one of my other favorite Waves plugins, the Mix Centric from Greg Wells. Um, but then let's take a look at what's going on here. Let's start with the lead vocal. I've taken freedom when it's already won. I so here I have the Omni channel. And if you look from you know left to right, you've got a few different things. You've got a preamp that you can saturate. 
on or off, right? So you can drive it and you've got different versions. You've got odd harmonics even, you got heavy. Um, so you don't even need to use this. Okay? You don't need to use this, um, but I would recommend you do at times because it's going to add color. It's going to add um, slight you know, harmonics, which is distortion basically. It's going to add character to potentially your very digital, very clean tracks, which is cool. Maybe maybe you don't need that. Maybe it's already warm enough or cool enough, so you don't have to have this on. But I play with this. So on this vocal, for example, I've got some saturation cranked. Uh, I've filtered off some low end, so a little high pass filter, rolled off up to 82. Um, and a little bit of a low pass filter. I rolled off some ultra top end as well. Kind of wanted a more, more warm, gritty sound, so I didn't want it to be super sheen up top. Um, I've got a little bit of, let's see, let's turn it on, de -essing. So some of the harsh S's, which I love that this channel strip has a de built in. Uh, it's got two. So what's great about that is a lot of times with the de you'll find that there's not just one frequency that's the problem, there's two. And so what I've done is found what I think is an offensive frequency in the verses. Um, I want to see what you're made of. The lead vocal sings there in that S C kind of gets a little hard. So about 7.7K, I'm having it roll off just the top end. It's like a compressor tied to a specific frequency. So it'll just sort of, you know, turn down the S's a little bit. I've got my EQ, which is this is the big one right here. This is a four band EQ, very similar to an SSL. Um, you got those bands available to you. So I've got, let's see, on this vocal, let's say I'm cutting a little bit at 570. That seemed a little boxy on my voice there. And um, I think that's all I'm doing on the vocal. It's a very simple little cut. And then I'm using compression. What I love is you got three styles of compressor, a VCA, a FET, and an opti optical compressor. So play around with the different styles here. They're gonna react to audio differently. You got your ratio, attack, release, um, and then your threshold, of course, gain reduction meter, or you can look at gain reduction here on the global meter. I love a couple of things. I love that there's a mix knob, which means I could do parallel compression right here in the plugin, which means if I really wanted to make it more aggressive yet still sound natural, I could really push the compressor and then blend it to taste, although I've got it as a traditional compressor here. You can also insert additional Waves plugins. So you can pull up all of your Waves, and you can see it's seeing all the Waves plugins I have on board, and I could insert them into the channel strip. So I could actually put an SSL channel strip inside of this channel strip, which is kind of like Inception. Okay, but I'm not that intelligent to handle that, so we'll stick with what comes with the Omni channel. You can also just rearrange these. So if you want the compressor to go before the EQ, you could do that. If you want the compressor to be before the preamp, you can do that, okay? I like the order they put them in because this is the way that makes sense to me. Preamp, and then gate what you don't want, DS what you don't want. So you're removing the things that you don't want, gate, DS, or then EQing, which is great for cutting as well. And then you compress what's left. So this is, I love that the default is what's logical in my mind, but many of my mixing friends love to compress first and EQ separately after that. And you can do that as well. And then of course you got polarity and you've got a limiter, which is kind of cool, baked in, and then you've got input output. You got everything you would ever want. So take a listen to what this is doing on the vocal, let's say, uh, bypassed. I've taken freedom. When it's already won, I steal the spotlight. So before? I've taken freedom. After. I've taken freedom. A little more aggressive, a little more in your face. This is also good on, let's say, here's the verse vocal. I wanna see before. I wanna see what you made of. Kind of flat with it. I wanna see what you made of. A little more up front, nothing too crazy there. Again, very subtle stuff. So I'm using it on the vocals. We're using it on the guitars to shape the guitars in the hook. Right, made them more aggressive. How? Well, a couple of ways. I'm using saturation on both of them. I'm cranking them up on the heavy setting um, to add some harmonics. I'm rolling off some ultra lows with high pass filters. I'm rolling off some top end, believe it or not. Um, and then I'm finding some complementary frequencies to boost and cut. Um, so on the left guitar, 
I'm boosting around 1K, and on the right guitar, I'm cutting around 1K, okay? And then on the left guitar, I'm boosting it around, or cutting it around 2K, and on the right guitar, I'm boosting around 2K. So they kind of have complementary EQ curves. Um, so it's simple EQ and saturation is what that's doing. brings the guitars to life, which is nice. And what I love is Ill Sense, right? So he's got um, really, really cool stuff. The main bass here. So with this, I really wanted to make it more aggressive. This is kind of the sound. Um, so I've got the saturation cranked, and then I've got, uh, let's see, an EQ boost at uh, 9.6K. So I'm lifting the top end and adding some saturation. Take a listen to this. Right, it's a little more piercing. It's a it's little more aggressive. So I'm using simple saturation and EQ to bring out the aggression. Um, which is really, really awesome. So same thing, like the kick drum. This is another good example. Listen to this kick drum by itself. This is the big kick. After. This is huge. So one thing that I'm doing here on this is a little bit of compression. I'm using the FET compressor, right, to give it a little more smack, a little two to one ratio and just adjusting the attack and release until it kind of feels nice. I'm doing a nice little bump um, at 60. So I'm boosting it around 60 hertz to give it some of that thump, because that's where it sounds nice, right? So again, before on the kick drum. After. Bigger, more aggressive, simple EQ and compression makes a big difference. So I've gone through all the tracks, and I'm just applying simple processing using the channel strip. And what, again, I love about the Sheps is a lot of times I would normally reach for um, a harmonic exciter or um, one of many saturation plugins that I like to add grit, to add color, um, but I don't need to. With this, I've got three different colors um, that can dial up or not dial up on the track, and it really goes a long way. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I've got all the Sheps plugins on the channel is on one row, and I'm only going to take away the Sheps. Everything else is going to be the same. Any of my mix bus processing, delays, reverbs, I'm not going to mess with any of that. So that'll all stay the same. You can just hear what just taking away the Omni channel, which is all the EQ and compression and saturation on the individual tracks, is going to do. And you're going to hear the mix go from where it is to flatter, not as lifelike, not as three dimensional. When I turn them back on, you're going to feel that pump. You're going to feel that life. It's going to jump out of the speakers a little bit. Here we go. right? It's bringing a little more pump, a little more life. Again, everything works together in a mix, but it's amazing what you can do in just one little plug-in, and it makes your mixing life easier to have it all here ready to go. So two things for you. One, if you don't mix with any kind of channel strip, I really suggest it. Any channel strip will do because it's going to save you trouble, and it's going to make you think more like mixing with a console, which I think is what allows you to mix creatively and fast because you're not looking for inserts and looking through your laundry list of EQs and compressors. You just grab one plug-in and get to work. Again, it's a Swiss Army knife. So in general, the channel strip concept, I highly recommend you try it out on your next mix. And then I would give it a shot on the Omni channel because this is one of the most flexible channel strips I've seen. And I think the kicker is, and I didn't even get into being able to do all of this in mid-side um, or uh, all the different modes, right? Mid-side alone is really, really cool. But just keeping it as it is, the way I'm doing it, well, let's grab a stereo example. This one is mono, so I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Stereo. Now you can see what I'm talking about. Right, you can see that each one of these plugins by default, if it's on a stereo track, is ST for stereo, duo, so it'll process the left and the right independently. 
uh, based off of what information it's giving it, an MS for mid side. This gives you a lot of flexibility, um, which is really, really cool. I haven't even touched that in this video, but there's so much flexibility there. And then again, I think the big kicker for me is twofold. One, the three different compression styles, a lot of flexibility with your compression, which is so helpful. And then the saturation on the preamp side of things, being able to dial in different types of saturation right on your track, just add to that color. This is what separates this channel strip from all the other ones. So demo it, check it out. It's a really, really powerful plugin. And it's got a picture of Andrew Sheps on it. And if you're ready to dive in deep with more mix training, I've got a free guide for you that'll really map it all out for you. It's my six steps to a radio ready song guide. It gives you the step-by-step -step process to take your song idea and make sure it's as polished as possible before it streams live on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever. And yes, mixing is only one of those six steps, believe it or not. I'll walk it all out for you in a simple to read 17 page PDF, absolutely free, called my Radio Ready Guide. You can get it for free at radioreadyguide.com. Download it, enjoy it, make better music. I'll see you in another video real soon.